Hi, welcome back to the committee program. I am your host, Arun Chaudhary, and I'm very excited about this next segment. Uh, when I was in Rome, I got a chance to catch up with some folks who were doing some really interesting campaigning uh, and cracking the code on something very important. And so without any further ado, I would like to introduce Fulvio Venanzetti, who is uh, do working in digital and social media and communications for the Pensioners Union. Actually, why don't I let you explain exactly what your job is after, and I do this to everyone, sorry, Fulvio, uh, these really long introductions on things. Um, I say what you've cracked the code on, which is, so, it, you know, if Italy makes one thing other than amazing food, it is lots and lots and lots of old people, right? The, you know, the, the, the population uh, difference is, is the biggest uh, in the world, I think other than Japan, definitely the biggest in Europe. And so actually uh, cracking the code on how the youth and old can, you know, work together culturally and vote together is something that is interesting all over the place, but especially in Italy. Can you just tell us first a little bit about your job and why cracking that code was your job? Yeah, well, thank, um, at first, thanks for having me. It's uh, kind of nice. And well, uh, how can I say it? Um, yes, we, uh, we, me and Lorenzo that you have met work for the Pensioners yeah. Union, uh, which is part of CGL, which um, probably the audience doesn't, doesn't know that, that good, but it's the biggest union uh, in, in, in Italy. It's very big, very powerful, very important union. You know, the equivalent would be if the AFL-CIO was, was bigger and stronger and mattered more. Yeah, uh, but I don't know. Uh, we are 60 millions, you are the 300 millions, I guess, a bit more. Um, and yeah, we have two and a half million uh, members in, in, in the SPI, Sindacato Pensioni Italiani. And we kind of think that that is a great opportunity. I mean, uh, some people may find for a union to be a weakness because we're representing people that don't work anymore. Uh, but we think that it's a great opportunity because it's a reflection of our society. As you said, we are the oldest country in Europe, the second in the world after Japan. And uh, we work in the, uh, in the communication, in the social media. We kind of try to uh, build strategies to connect more the people that we represent with the world we're living now. Uh, and we try to do by innovate a little bit. Uh, what is that about cracking the code? I mean, um, making uh, the pensioners, the old people, uh, able to understand what they see, because you have, we've seen the explosions of social media. Um, now you have TikToks that it's going crazy. They probably don't, don't understand it that good. Uh, but they feel like um, Facebook was uh, the thing for them because it's kind of easy. And we have seen an exponential growth in the, in the use of social media by retired people, by old people uh, in the last few years. And also the COVID pandemic did, did great. I was going to say, yeah, just steroids for that, right? Yeah, yeah. because they, they felt the need to be in, in, in connection with their, with, the, with their children, with their nephews, with, I mean, with the rest of the world, actually. So they started using Zoom. They started using anything you can imagine. And they uh, actually um, reacted good. I mean, they're able to do it. It's nothing new for them. Uh, so that was a surprise. And by asking us how could we understand better what they what they feel, um, we try we started to do some research, and we wanted to try to tell the world uh, the world well the the people who who see us who watch us uh, what their world is is like, uh, what the old people world is, uh, because. Also, a problem is that uh, they're often uh, treated by public opinions, uh, public opinion, and also young people uh, like they're at the mar at the margin right now. They are not needed. Uh, they don't produce. Mm -hmm. They don't work. So uh, it's mm, almost like they are some sort of I'm missing the word, I guess. Um, well, disposable well, to society, like sort of yeah. been, been put aside, I guess. Uh, which is sort of why the kind of lowest common denominator culture that's aimed at them, which is like, you know, sort of bad news television about like local crime and stuff is uh, 
but there it is so sort of horrible because you know I mean, look, you guys have made this uh, book, and I actually, we will put a link because it's now available for folks to get it, where you show a lot of the work that you've done. And, and some of it, you know, is, you know, surprisingly, you know, meme heavy stuff. So, you know, you're talking about grandparents wanting to talk to their kids. Yeah, that's one thing. But when you are like, we want to do something that's internet funny, you know, uh, like, how does that conversation start, I guess? Well, the point is, uh, we st- started using memes uh, in our main um, stru- strategy in communication uh, because we saw that old people actually reacted to that very, very good. The point is, we can't do a meme uh, that it's, I don't know, um, pointless in a way, just funny. We need to put content inside that. And, and the message has to be in there. Yeah, the, message, yeah. the political message needs to be there and visually and mm, from the point of view of the content it needs to fit to fit in what we do i mean uh, our members need to see that and say "Mm, yeah it's a bit strange but it's it's something i can relate to and over the years we started collecting just for fun me and lorenzo um, screenshots or screen caps of the comments that we received uh the, um, the I don't know, the images they sent us, the memes we did. Uh, and at some point we thought, well, this thing may, maybe might be worth something because it's like a window on a world that n- nobody really looks up to uh, because getting old, it's not that, that great. And a source of inspiration also was uh, Aging in America uh, from Ed Kashi, mm-hmm. uh, which is a book mm-hmm. of, I don't know, many, many years ago, if I don't remember bad, it's like around... 20, 2003, yeah, I think maybe, something like yeah, that. In the very early uh, 2000s. And he tried to, um, he succeeded in, uh, um, in telling a story about old people in America by pictures. So we uh, made this, this Chao Nonna, this book that you showed, and it's, it's great even to, to see it behind a, a monitor. And we try. And that to, means hello, grandma. I, my, yeah. I, I'm, in, I'm in between Italian teachers right now, but I just I'm still showing off. You know the, <laughs> the residual. It's stuck. it's really stuck. And the the result was uh, I don't know. We think good. Uh, the book had mm, two. Oh wow, we have a cat. We have a cat. That's Golda. <laughs> Great cat, by the way. The studio um, cat. The the Chao had mm, two. Um, I don't, so missions, if, if we can call, her, call them like that. Um, first one was to uh, try to tell the world of the unions uh, to, uh, to the younger generations, because they don't know us anymore. Uh, they don't want to know, know us. Uh, they kind of think that we are old fashioned. We don't really understand what's going on, but we're, mm. we try to do our best to, to stay in the present. And to do that, we needed to use a, a, a more um, fresh uh, language, something that they could relate to. Uh, the second mission was to um, try to build uh, relationships with uh, the, the cultural world, with people that usually we don't speak to. Uh, you, for example, we had the chance to meet you because we, we had this book and it was great. I mean. Um, and we partially succeeded in that. Uh, the fact that right now the book is uh, is going to we we started it uh, by printing in bringing printing it in a limited edition. We had I don't know in our minds this book would have never sell, sold a, a copy, but we we were surprised because actually people started liking it. People started to to ask us if we could talk about it, uh, if we can, can go around and I don't know. Mm, show it, sell it. You whatever. need to turn sometimes the ideas into an object. I would remind you of uh, the UK uh, 2017 general election when they had the manifesto. When that, you know, was yeah. so exciting. It was just like sometimes when you have the you object, have an object, yeah, it, it it can help to build the myth. So I mean, I think you make a good point that like you know we underestimate old people, and so like they're. Uh, understanding of humor that's necessary to get young people in is very similar. And so this cuts both ways. But I want to ask you about the other ingredient, which is nostalgia. So, you know, I think we know how effective nostalgia is for the people who 
have lived through it. I mean, that's very obvious. How do you find, how have you used nostalgia to also get young people interested? Uh, and how, how does it, how do they react differently to things that you do that are sort of more purely nostalgic? Well, we uh, usually we get two kind of reactions from young people. Uh, you have to know that uh, sometimes uh, young people and old people, uh, the, the mass media, they try to make them conflict. Um, I hope this is good in English. Uh, so they basically say that uh, old people stole their futures. Uh, it's it's kind of messed up, uh, but. Also, with the pandemic, something changed because, um, as you could, could have seen, um, young people had to stay home to, to save old people that were at risk of dying. And they did good because, I mean, their, their grandparents, uncles, parents, whatever. So they need to be protected. Uh, the nostalgia. Well, um, I'd like to say something before if you, about nostalgia. Um, we also have to get that old people are changing. The old people that, that we represent now are not the old people we are used to think about. Uh, their past, it's not the um, Second World War. It's the 70s. Right, it's not this sort of permanent post-war generation exactly. who we so always we, sort of, that just old people to us. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we were used to think about our, pa our grandparents that, yeah, they, they, they've seen Hitler, they've seen um, Stalin or whatever. But it's right now, they're completely different people. They, they, their values come from the great, mm, great fights for, for civil rights, uh, divorce, abortion, um, the workers' laws, and all that. And that is a thing that young people, it's a portion of history that young people, at least in our country, don't, don't know. They, they don't know anything about it, because in our school programs, you just stop studying after w World War II. This is exactly like the U.S. If you're lucky, you finish World War II. You know, they yeah. have to yell out your way out the door. You're like, oh, U.S. won, you know, and everyone's like, all right. And then that's it. But, I mean, the world it, in the 19th century, in 19th century has been something great. I mean, you had a lot of fights, a lot of, th a lot of things happened, the um, Berlin Wall, whatever. And they don't know anything about it. So... When we started to make memes, to um, innovate a bit our communication, uh, we mm, tried to make contents that activated that frame of the 70s for our um, members. And the young people reacted quite good because it was something that they had never seen. So the nostalgia, it's a bit in the in the loving frame so it's my grandpa my grandma i want to connect better the the grandparents want to connect better with the, with their nephews or children or whatever you want and another frame it's this one it's about who they really are what they did our civil rights are mm, in a way uh we we got them because of our grandparents and that is something that we should know and recognize Another thing that I guess um, made the book a bit mm, successful, it's also that inside there is something that activates fear inside uh, the, the young people because we also tried, but this is mm, from many, it's years now that we try to uh, do something about that, but uh, we also try to uh, explain how hard can be to get old i mean yeah life now it's it's longer we live longer but how do we live how well do we reach our final years mm, i think also about covid in the last months uh, how many times have we heard the the fact that the people dying they had other pathologies or whatever um, two, two or more pathologies that led to their end sadly um, and the fact is, who takes care of old people when, when they're old and they're not self-sufficient anymore? We. We do. It's 
their children, it's their grandchildren, and sometimes they have to pay. I mean, uh, it's hard to compare our health system because it's oh, very it's different. Incomparable. And yeah. I don't want maybe, and I don't have the the, the, the skills of the knowledge or, or the knowledge to talk about it properly. But uh, that thing also mm, was something that we felt. Uh, was of great interest for for the youngsters that, that got the book and also of course the the appearance of it because it it's red and it has this thing which is which makes a bit clear uh, on which side yeah, the pixelated yeah. hammer and sickle just to, to make sure people yeah. uh, are seeing and it, I think it's so right that it's nostalgia aimed at people who are old now not some sort of bullshit like Steven Spielberg, you know, Greatest Generation kind of like feature film. And it's it's sort of taking the same way that often middle-aged, you know, political consultants, I'll throw myself in, sort of paint the youth with a brush. And it's like, oh, they really care about the environment more than anything else. And student loans because they all are like, yeah. oh, care about the planet and their education. And it's like, they care about the same stuff that you care about. And like, as, as you're pointing out, one of the things that they care about is who the hell is going to take care of me when I get old? Do we have enough of a welfare state? Will there be enough left? Or will like Lega sell it to, you know, the Republicans in the US or something? Well, if, if something doesn't change, uh, it's, it's going to be hard. I mean, uh, right now we in Italy, we are able to withstand uh, the, the, the public health, the, the expenses for the public health, because uh, People are working, people worked with good yeah. contracts and everything. But the new generations, they are not working with mm, full time jobs. Mm, it's precarious work. It's, it's precarious yeah, yeah, work. Yeah, it's gray area work stuff. Yeah. And if things uh, continue to go like this, it's kind of scary because we, we, we're not going to have enough money to sustain. All of us that are going to live a lot, and maybe I don't want to scare you, but <laughs> it's it's a problem. It's a problem. It's something that we we need to look up to to and and try to solve it. And well, when you are solving is, problems, I, it was, I mean, yes, this is huge. You know, huge and you know, seemingly intractable thing, but you do represent a lot of people uh, in Italy. So how, uh, are you in the pensioners union, you know, uh, as, you know, as, uh, as a big gorilla in the room, able to exercise power on the political debate and how does your digital communication strategy play into that? All right. Well, it's, mm, it's kind of hard because, uh, we, uh, we try to, um, to talk with, with the governments that we, that, that, that have succeeded over the years. Some of them were a bit more receptive. Others, mm, a bit less. We had like seven years of total silence and we were completely un incapacitated. Uh, but yeah, we represent, uh, two, we have two and a half million members, but we actually talk for one third of, of the population because in Italy you have uh, 60, no, um, 16 million uh, millions uh, pensioners. Got it. Pensioners. If you think also about the over 60s people that still uh, are not retired but are working, but anyhow they feel a bit like I don't know, aging. We we are representing more than one third. And the thing is uh, that. Those these people, the old people, are the one, the, the only ones right now that are still participating in the democratic um, flow of the state. They vote, they go in uh, in demonstrations. Uh, they also um, spend. They volunteer. They I volunteer was always surprised to see the a average age of a volunteer on a campaign for like a young, exciting campaign like that we would yeah. work on. But they go to cinema. probably yeah. like 65, 70 years old. Yeah. They go to cinema. They go to theaters. They go to restaurants. They spend because they actually have money because um, the crisis, since they were already retired, didn't hit them that bad. So they um, had, they kind of have um, a bit, I don't know. Uh, the ones that got an easier time a bit. Yeah. Uh, 
so they they feel a bit safe in a way and that portion of population is the one that are that mm, uh, I, how can i say it uh the parties the, the political parties uh they're much more interested in their votes than in the younger's vote because the younger they're not organized uh they are i don't know a bit more cynic they don't believe anymore yeah, in yeah. politics uh whilst the old people do so um also because they as i said before uh they participated in the 70s and in the 80s in in great battles for civil rights right now they still want to participate so we are able to interact with them and uh, by interacting them when, uh, with them and in getting their instances i don't know if it's a word if their problems yeah, yeah. we can transfer them uh, to Incident. to the public debate our communication strategy um was to um, try to use more uh, the, the the instruments that we think work more. As I said, uh, social medias right now, they're full of old people. They use internet. We also felt that it was kind of a waste of money. We also have to think about that in doing advertising on uh, buses or um, metro stations or whatever, because what's the conversion in that? Uh, instead, by studying the territory, if if you allow me to use this word, and yeah, sure. and try to um, say the right thing at the right moment with the right instrument, with a language that can be uh, understood understood by the masses, also the young people, uh, we forced a bit uh, the governments to. To lend ear, lend ears to to our demands, and mm, it's something that we uh, succeeded uh, three weeks ago when the PNRR was was released, the, the recovery fund, recovery plan. Mm, mm -hmm. It has like ten names. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. When it was Gobs released, of money coming to recovery. Yeah, <laughs> um, we we saw that a law to take care in the next years. It, it needs to be written, yeah, but the, the basics for it to be um, written well. Uh, there are, um, we, um, I don't have the words, um, we had a lot, it's written inside the, the recovery plan that we're going to have a yeah. law for the um, not self-sufficient old people that we have. Yes, okay, we, we yes, people who can't take care of themselves, yeah, invalids. And that is partially also because of this because thanks to this we had a chance to meet uh, a portion of the government and we had a chance to talk with them and they were amazed by the book uh, i think we can say it and thanks to this that it's actually it worked like um, a trojan horse to get inside um we presented this these things and we had the chance to um, put that inside the, the, the public debate and it, we hope my we last work. question uh for you is and you know i think already the most important thing that i take sort of away is this you know idea of not taking history for granted and keeping up with it and sort of in, in in the way that impacts people but you know this is in hindsight as you were just sort of getting into your job and figuring it out what was something uh, that you really got wrong or were really surprised about or an assumption you made that somebody really, you know, let you know was the wrong way to think about this? I think this would be the most helpful thing for our comrades uh, over in Europe and in North America uh, so that they can start activating uh, their pensioner people. Well, I think maybe the compromise, the the ability to reach a compromise, to be patient, to, I mean fight for what you think is, is right, but also to take it slow. You can do great steps uh, in one day. I mean, you have to uh, be part of a process. And our members, our old people that I, had the I have the chance to, to work with every day, uh, they're all like that. They really believe in what they're doing and they're, they have also the time to do it because they're a bit they're free. They don't have to work yeah, yeah, yeah. all day. Uh, 
uh, and that's probably the, the the thing that I would like to um, uh, to pass the most to, to to young people to I don't know to the, the people that w will see this and and the thing that I've learned the most so to reach a compromise with what what you do uh, with what you want to do and to take steps step by step little steps to reach yeah your, you got to take a different rhythm right yeah. it's not about winning you know. But they this hour school. or getting that email out right away that where yeah. you make the perfect argument. But it's about like let them have the weekend less, to think about it. With a lot less instruments that we have, so it's I think that we we can do it much better if we want to. That's the thing. Fulvio, thank you so much for coming on. Well, really appreciate it. Thank you. For and uh, we'll have to have you uh, back on maybe uh, closer to the elections. You can tell us uh, how the old person vote's going to go and all this kind of thing. You can be. Uh, well, let, let us know. <laughs> yeah, well, but I, I'll, I'd be honored, but we'll see. I don't know. Uh, I guess that we <laughs> have to. We'll have to make a bit some polls between our yeah. members. They are strange, but we'll we'll see. Yeah. No, I know it's a real struggle in the states too. Yeah. Uh, okay, we'll talk soon. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Committed. 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 Committed.